So guys, I've done it. I've switched to Linux on my gaming PC. You can see it, it says pop right there. That's actually a background I created. But yes, my gaming PC now runs pop OS 100% of the time, no Windows at all. But to get it there to where it actually performed very well for gaming was a bit of a process. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do it yourself so you don't have to go through as many tutorials as I did. That being said, I am going to reference this tutorial right here. Um, this guy is awesome if you have questions about Linux. He does a really good job explaining how to get certain things running. We're gonna talk about some of the things that I experienced that weren't in his tutorials though. So things that I guess are a little bit more relevant to the current landscape. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Hello and welcome, my name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. So Linux gaming, it's an interesting beast because well, it's, it's getting better and better and better as we go on. Like the closer we get to the Steam Deck, the more and more Linux is becoming a platform for gaming. Due to this, there has been a large amount of growth and development in just the last few months. I recently installed my first Linux distro onto a PC and originally I built it onto a PC using a really old graphics card uh, with some negligible performance to begin with. Then I did it onto my main editing workstation PC, which is this one back here behind the snaky head. That one uh, did amazingly. In fact, actually all the numbers we're gonna be talking about today are from that PC. But then after that, after I had done all of that and done all the testing, I recently obtained a 3060 and I wanted to see, does this translate to NVIDIA as well? But that being said, let's actually talk about numbers briefly because there's a reason you want to do this and it's entirely based off of these numbers. So let's, let's talk about some games. So we tested Devil May Cry 5, Outer Worlds, Witcher 3, and Doom Eternal. We picked these games because, well, they're relatively new and they do affect a wide range of rendering engines. For example, ReEngine is actually used in Devil May Cry which is exclusive to Capcom. The Doom Eternal actually runs on Vulkan, which should hypothetically work pretty well with Linux. The Outer Worlds was a Microsoft sponsored title, so I'm assuming that this one's going to suck a little bit. And The Witcher, well, if you're an AMD gamer, you know that this game is littered with all of the NVIDIA features that they could stuff into it, making it difficult to run on AMD cards to begin with, and probably very difficult to run on Linux as NVIDIA's technology isn't open source as compared to AMD's who is. So starting with our Windows numbers, we're actually looking at 140 frames per second on Devil May Cry, uh, Outer Worlds was 80 frames per second, Witcher was 95 frames per second, and Doom Eternal ran at 160 frames per second. Hilariously, going over to Linux, the re-engine did not see any difference between Linux and Windows and still ran at 140 frames per second. The Outer Worlds ran at 65 frames per second, taking a massive hit, and The Witcher 3 ran at 70 frames per second. Doom Eternal did also take a hit, going all the way down to 150 frames per second, losing 10 frames per second. And also, it did run without any extra compatibility needing to be added because uh, there was a Proton update from the last time we actually took a look at this game on Linux. So with that, we do have quite a bit of performance to make up on a lot of these games, and then some of them, we may have performance to gain. And to do so, we're gonna have to do a couple of things. So let's start with actually getting these games running on Linux. These are the games that are actually supported with through Linux without having to enable Proton. And there's actually not an, it's not an insignificant amount here. We've got Borderlands 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, Bioshock Infinite, Bastion, it's not a bad library, but we can expand it by simply changing one thing in the settings. We just gotta go settings and we just need to go Steam Play, Proton Experimental, enable Steam Play for all titles. And what this is gonna do is it's going to use the latest version of Proton to enable compatibility. We just need to restart Steam. So now if we look at our library, Whoa, all the games are here now, yes. So with Steam Play enabled, 
It just straight up allows you to use any kind of game that you want to do. That being said, not all games will work with the same versions of Proton at the moment. This is a feature that I'm sure is being worked out and the kinks are being, you know, erased. But uh, for the most part, uh, it seems that some versions of Proton don't work with some games and some do and knowing which version works well is a bit tricky. I have found that 15.13 has been a really good one to roll back to if a game is not launching on the current versions or on the current version of Glorious Agril, which we will also be talking about a little bit later. After getting that all installed, that's how we got those numbers. And on the NVIDIA GPU, it was mostly the same. It seemed like the performance was just barely being held back. And there's a reason for that. On Pop! OS, unfortunately, the OS doesn't have game mode installed. Game mode is a base feature of Ubuntu and is actually really easy to get onto the computer. In fact, actually, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. So we're gonna need something called Synaptic Package Manager. What this does is it allows us to, uh, well, it allows us to not use the terminal, to be completely honest. And that is a good thing because uh, new to Linux, uh, I can use the terminal if I really needed to. So what does Synaptic do? Well, so if we go in and actually use Synaptic, it's going to allow us to um, sort of add things to this version of Linux that it doesn't have. And so what we really need is we need something called game mode. Now, what is game mode? Well, game mode or feral game mode, as it's known as, allows your system to really stretch its legs. You see on Linux, by default, it ends up being pretty conservative. There it is. So this is game mode. And we just click mark for installation. It's going to mark the rest of the things that it needs to have for the install. And then all we have to do is apply to be installed, apply all of them. And it's just going to go ahead and it's going to put game mode in there. So there you go. Successfully applied. So this is actually used to kind of upgrade your existing uh, power usage. After that's installed, we just need to add a little bit of a command to any game that we want to run game mode. So any game that doesn't perform well, we can turn this on and what it does is it actually unlocks the processor, not the GPU as much. It does kind of affect the, uh, the power limits and so it does make it so that it performs much closer to the Windows performance. And we did see an increase in frame rates just by enabling this one thing alone. So going down the list in order, we've got Devil May Cry 5, which went to 145 frames per second, beating Windows for the first time in this day, and that is not going to be the last time in this day. Doom Eternal went to 155, almost to the point of the Windows performance. We were getting very, very close. Witcher 3, we went up to 80 frames per second, giving us a nice little boost. And The Outer Worlds, well, that one broke actually. I, I think that there was a reason that that broke, but uh, we fixed it and it later. It, this is what I was talking about. Some versions of Proton work better than others. And that was one of the Proton updates that actually happened during that. And you can roll that back to a different version of Proton, but I didn't know that at that point while I was benchmarking. So we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but there is something called the Glorious Egg Roll. Now, what is Glorious Egg Roll? Well, it's a customized version of Proton that is actually designed by somebody in the community to run better. It has a lot of fixes for various games, and more importantly, it enables FSR as a feature that you can turn on on all games. Installing Glorious Egg Roll is pretty straightforward. Right here is our Steam folder. It's the .steam and then installation. And then what we're just gonna need to do is create a new folder called compatibility tools.d. I think I spelled that right. I may not have well, what we are going to need right here. We've got our pro. So we got glorious slash GitHub. And what we're going to need is the latest release. So this is the Proton GE custom. So we're in the tar GZE or hmm, I think either one of them works, but we're going to do this one and we're going to open that up. Since I already have this open, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to put this directly right into compatibility tools. Just like that. All right. After it comes back up, we can go settings. And in the same place that we had our settings before in Steam Play, we can actually select our new version of Proton. So this is Proton 6.18 GE Glorious Egg Roll dash two. This will require a restart on Steam's behalf. Now Glorious Egg Roll itself has some seriously good compatibility layer effects. Because of that, just turning on Glorious Egg Roll took Witcher 3 up to 85 frames per second, Outer Worlds up to 75 frames per second, Doom Eternal up to 160, Devil May Cry went up to 160. Yes, we're destroying our Windows performance here. Now, that's not the only thing that Glorious Egg Roll does. It also allows you to do FSR. And while we could get into the nitty gritties about FSR and how it all works, it is a good way to get your frame rates up and it does work across both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. And with those things turned on, your Linux is ready for gaming. Yes, you are ready to game on Linux and be at parity with Windows. And to summarize what we've done today, we've downloaded and installed game mode onto Pop. We've updated Proton to Glorious Egg Roll, and that's about it. That's all you really need to do. Now your Linux is set up for gaming and you can get this performance. Not only that, but you can turn on FSR, which is awesome. And for me, I've had a really good time actually gaming on Linux using Proton in this way. Plus just having game mode, having the ability to tweak things to your liking Honestly, it makes this pretty awesome. So with all those features enabled and following the stuff that we talked about, you too will see performance like this on Pop! OS. But that's where we're gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave it a like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Wolfie, out.